So we know so far that objects with their member variables have a copy of all the data members of the class. Yeah, with their own individual values. Sometimes it might be useful this, that you have one copy per blueprint or per class. For example, to know the number of times a class was instantiated, like for creating a unique ID for a member variable that you instantiate. And therefore, you can create a, a variable in a class that uses the keyword static, and we know static from C already. And that means for data that you create a, a class member that exists only once. Okay? And for a function that means you create a class method that is not bound to an object, but such a method can still access the private data members. So what does it mean? A static data member always exists, as it did with C. It's a bit like a global variable in that sense, but it's in the scope of this, the namespace of a class. Yeah, so even if you have zero objects of a class instantiated, um, you can, you still have the data values for any static class member. So you can call those functions using the class scope operator, like cake colon colon my function. However, those m static member functions do not receive it this pointer because they are not bound to an instance, right? So they are a class specific function, so to speak. And I often say they are just class functions because they are not in that sense, um, for me, methods um, as they are not bound to a specific instance. So here's an example to, uh, to get rid of your confusion. Assume we have as private member an ID for an instance. So you, we want that each instance of a class is different. Yeah, so ID could be one, the next instance get ID two, three, four, and so on. But each should have a, a unique ID. So how do we do that? Well, maybe it's a good idea to keep track of the last ID that we have assigned to an instance. So therefore we create the static variable as ID. So that's really our last ID that we have given. Now when we call a constructor, we, we could create a constructor that just accesses this um, class uh, data member. But what we do here, we actually make a constructor private. So no one can instantiate this object now. Right? No one can instantiate test static. So to somehow make it a useful class, we provide here instead a public function called create. And this is a static function. So it's a class, like we said here. It's, it's a class method not bound to any object. So anyone can call this function. And what we do here is we create a new, with using the new operator, a new instance of test static on the heap. And for this object, we then assign the ID to be um, our static class member ID, and we increment this ID. So every time you call create, you get a new ID, and this ID globally gets kind of increased. So now as this here as a class here is typically just containing the declaration, we need also a memory space for such a static variable. So to do that in the implementation, we have to kind of create it, the variable here and initialize it. So here we have to use again um, the name of the class as it would be a namespace and we just initialize it. Now, this is similar to using an extern variable a little bit. And uh, here is then the actual value which provides the storage space for this variable. Okay, so that's a, this is a typical pattern that you sometimes find uh, for certain object-oriented patterns. That's why I wanted to introduce it already at this stage.
So we sometimes find this idea that you have to go through such functions that then return objects on your behalf. Okay. Just a little reminder in terms of the terminology. So we talked about scope and scope is the context within a program that an identifier is valid and can be referenced by name. What is an identifier? Well, it's like a variable or the name of a function and so on that you need to use. So it identifies a specific object, function, method in a unique fashion. So now there is a new scope, which is called a class scope, in which you have data members and member functions. We know before there was the file scope and in file scope we can access non-member functions and uh, in function scope well we have variables defined in a function or a member function and these are stored on a stack and they are destroyed after the function completes. 